The next thing I want to do is I want to use Taylor series to evaluate limits. And so let's look at the limit of, say, uh, e to the x squared minus 1 minus x squared over x to the fourth. And I'm going to tell you right away this is 1 half. The way I know it's 1 half is not because I did L'Hopital's rule four times, okay, which you can do if you want. If you apply L'Hopital's rule four times, everything would be fine. Um, it's just that I know what this is based on Taylor series, okay? This is an example I just made up. Um, here, e to the x squared, we know is, uh, let, me, let me write it a little bit differently here. We know e to the t is 1 plus t plus 1 half t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial t cubed and so on. And therefore, e to the x squared is 1 plus x squared plus 1 half x to the 4th plus 1 over 6 x to the 6th plus um, this would be 1 over 24 x to the 8th and so on. And so if we take e to the x squared minus 1 minus x squared, we're taking e to the x squared, we're moving over the 1, we're moving over the x squared, the leading term is going to be 1 half x to the 4th. So this is going to be 1 half x to the 4th plus 1 sixth x to the 6th plus 1 over 24 x to the 8th and so on, all divided by x to the 4th. And notice what happens. Notice that when we divide by x to the 4th, we're going to have um, all of our powers in the numerator decrease by 4. So we're going to have 1 half uh, plus 1 sixth x squared plus 1 over 24 x to the 4th and so on. And all these other terms are going to be 0, except for the first term, because those powers cancel completely, and we end up with 1 half. Okay? So we can use Taylor series to evaluate that limit right away. I know that that's going to be 1 half, because we'll get a 1 half in the Taylor series expansion um, if we look at the x to the fourth term. Okay? So that's how that would work. Um, you could also, if you want to, Think about what would happen if you change this x to the fourth to an x cubed, and I'll let you work through that, okay? But uh, that's now a limit that you can just look at and tell me the answer, albeit if you understand Taylor series, okay? Which I know is a big if, um, just because they're new. So that's that. So we can do uh, that type of stuff with limits. We could also look at, for example, the limit as x approaches zero of... Let's look at sine of x minus x over x cubed. And let's think about what's that going to be. So if we have sine of x over x, sine of x minus x over x cubed, I say right away negative 1 sixth. Why do I think it's going to be negative 1 sixth? Well, I know that sine of x is x minus 1 sixth x cubed plus 1 over uh, 5 factorial x to the fifth and so on. And if we subtract x from both sides, then that x moves over and we divide by x cubed, we're going to end up with this constant in front, that negative 1 sixth. And so that's going to end up being what the limit is. And so it turns out we can use Taylor series to get all these limits. And it turns out uh, all of most of the limits that we've been talking about so far, at least the ones that we involve like L'Hopital's rule, instead of using L'Hopital's rule three times, we get negative 1 sixth. It, you know, we can come up with these limits now uh, much easier. Okay, so... A lot of the limits that we talked about, I will come up with, or the book will come up with, because we know what the Taylor series is. Okay, so just, again, another trick there. Okay, so that's uh, another place where we can use Taylor series. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention, and this will transition nicely into uh, what I want to do next week, which is where we're going to talk a little bit about what's called numerical analysis. So what I mean by that is... I want to study how many terms do we need in a series to get the series accurate to have many decimal places. So let's say I wanted to talk about what E is. I want to get E. E, by the way, has a nice pattern. 2.7, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, uh, 45, 90, 35. I write it that way just to emphasize the kind of pattern that happens. It turns out E is irrational in this pattern, so the unpredictable uh, 
decimal expansion, so it's not something that you could predict without actually going through and calculating the decimals. At any rate, e is e to the x at x equals 1. So in other words, uh, 1 over n factorial times x to the n. But if x is 1, this is just 1 over n factorial, So as we talked about. So it turns out e is this number 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, and so on. That happens to converge to e. And let's say we wanted to get e accurate to, let's say, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 decimal places. Well, how many terms would we need to evaluate in order to get that? Okay, and so Taylor series can help us answer that. Okay, so we will do that in the next video.